I love it. It's Flannel Friday. I know, but it's just, it's like teaching a room full of lumberjacks. I think I'm a picnic table <laughs> over a lumberjack. Yeah, or. Yeah, Take me to table. Table. Very true. I like it. Okay. No, but just the Okay. Oh. I do not take kindly to unkind words. Unkind words. Honestly, I don't okay. know why anyone would ever say that. Why would you? Ever Latest and greatest tricks. <laughs> See this physics on her? Tate is a It's not done. That was impressive. Just play it. Hey, look. Hey, look. It makes it easier for me to grade. Oh. You see all the work on it? Not that good. Honestly, this is a lot. Man, I'll go. I just look forward to this class every day. Oh, I love everyone in this class. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I dislike a single one. Okay. All right. Great. This isn't like a kumbaya moment. Let's just talk about this. This is why we need to have it. Imagine if we did it. Elementary school, and this is the class like we had all day. Oh, wait. 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 Circle and label the points, pay attention to the directions, don't miss simple points. So, label whatever <laughs> points you're going to use to find the slope. Show me how you find the slope, either on the graph or where I tell you to do the instruction. But here's what's critical. Like, Kendra, what was your maximum elongation? I'm not on there yet. <laughs> don't worry. 0. 0.265. I, yeah, 0. 0.265. Okay. 0. 0.42. What? Whoa. Whoa. Ah, come on. They might have gone all the way to Wrong. one and a half kilometers. We didn't go. We also went to one and a half kilometers. Kendra. We're supposed to add this. Okay. We weren't. Exactly. If, our video can't, if our video works, can't get it right. So, so, I'm not the video works. Here's the deal. If, you're, if Kendra's maximum elongation is 0.42, right? It's cool. You're going to find this area. But now listen to me. When you're doing these calculations on the second page, what if Kendra's going to go to 0.42 meters, she's going to come up here, she's going to find the point where it actually crosses the line. This is what she's going to use in the calculation of area. Okay, It's going to be this point right here. Okay, Not the data point that corresponds with that elongation. She's going to use the data point that goes actually with the best fit line, otherwise it's not going to work out. Okay? So, now, if it happens to be that data point is exactly on the line, cool, she can use that. But if it's not, you have to use the point that is actually on the line that corresponds with this point. Okay? Huge thing. So here's what should happen. You're going to calculate your UG, which is basically going to be the distance between x1 and x2. Okay, so here's your equilibrium point. It took a certain amount of energy to stretch it to this first point, and a second amount of energy to stretch it to this point. So basically, what you're finding is the transformative potential energy in the spring when you take that 1 half k times x2 squared minus x1 squared, which is the formula that's given. All you're doing is saying, hey, what's the change in the potential energy in the oscillation? That's it. Okay? That's all you're doing. But don't do this. Don't take x2 minus x1 and then square it. Okay? It's the change in the energy. So it has to be x2 squared minus x1 squared times 1 half k. Right? Don't subtract them and then square them. You have to su square them, then subtract them. Don't ink that up. Now, the other thing that you're going to find is that your UG, which is going to be this value, which is going to, what we're going to call H. So basically, how much potential energy changes when you take it from the bottom of the oscillation to the top of the oscillation. So here's what you have to understand. Your equilibrium point down determines your UGS. The height of the oscillation itself is what determines UG. Okay? 
So that's why there's X1, X2, and H. Make sure that you understand that value and that relationship. You might see a question on the test, might not, I'm just saying. Okay? So it's the distance from the equilibrium that determines us. It's this distance here that determines your UG in that oscillation process. Don't confuse the two. Okay? Can you repeat it just for Yeah, that's UG? Yeah. Your handwriting, uh, I'm sorry. You said it okay. one time, man. <laughs> This is UG from the bottom of the oscillation to the top of the oscillation. Okay? Now, if this drops to zero, there's no change in UG because it's just hanging there. Right? Right. Just like the spring is not being expanded. Yes. So there's no trans there's no transformation into us, and there's nothing into UG, and there's no kinetic energy. Right. Okay? The system has lost all its energy to heat the friction. So UG is also H then, right? So yeah, UG is based solely on H. So UG is just MGH. Okay, yeah. This is going to get you to change in us. Okay. Okay? And what you should see in an ideal world, the change in us is equal to the change in UG. Because all you're doing is changing those forms of energy. You are correct. Okay? So when you look at your data, and when it says in the question, what conclusion can be drawn by comparing potential energy of gravity to potential energy of the spring, you should see that they're basically the same value. If they're not, then you really can't oscillate. You couldn't have a change in us being like 10 joules and UG only changing 0.1. The system couldn't oscillate. So if, when you're looking at your values, if they're vastly different, something went wrong. What's oscillating? Huh? What's oscillating? Bouncing up and down. Oh, uh, so make sure on that second page on 6, 7, and 9, show your work. Everybody's numbers are different. Uh, as a ballpark, I'm guessing you typically you get around one and a half joules for those answers. That's a big ish because the springs are different and what you measure is different. Is that for PEG minus PES or all? No, no, this is on the second page when you do the calculations on six, seven, and nine. Okay. Now, when you get to question number nine, it says, use the equation work equals, work equals fx, where f is the average force exerted on the spring, and the, find the work that's done. So what you want to do here is that, look, here's the first force is zero. Here's the second force way up here. So how are you going to find the average of these two forces? Add them together and divide by two. So basically, you just end up then with a rectangle. Oh, you know you can do that. Link times width. Mm -hmm. Now, based on wow. that, maybe. Simple as that. And yeah. Really cool. So, what you should see is, yeah, exactly. This should be the same as the area of the triangle, which should be the same what? thing as the work that's done. So, it's just two different ways of finding the same thing. But here's, what, and then the reason I had you do that is that. If I'm just pushing this marker, I can draw a graph like this of force and distance, and it's cool because I'm exerting the same force over the entire time. When I'm stretching a spring, I can't do that because I have to apply more and more force to stretch it further and further and further. So this is why this is one half kx squared, okay? And that's why it's more complicated because of the fact that it's a linear function, not just a horizontal line. So be careful of that. Okay? You got me? That's crazy. Uh, okay. 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 All right. All right. Any other questions? Um, I'm yeah. Sure there will be I'm sure I'll have some later. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do we have a review? Sam, do we have a review? We're working on this place. Is it the test Tuesday? Monday. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. No, what, what are the hard questions? Is there like one of the... Is there another one? Like, is there a bungee cord one? 
blue stuff. The form, the form will be in there. I won't make you do all the calculations. <laughs> Is this like a shorter test? Like a, huh? Isn't this like a, would this be a shorter test? Would be what? Like a shorter test? Yeah, and it's all multiple choice. Oh uh, my god, oh no. No. That makes it like, wait. Yeah! That makes it harder. Wait, how many questions are there? I think my whole like heart just dropped like okay. in my stomach. So nothing else about the lab. That's due on Monday. If you haven't done and you want to handle it, I have a question. I have a general question. So in the bungee cord we have the 19 and the 12 and the 31. How do we know what these are? Okay. Exactly. No one knows. You're welcome, boys. Magic. Magic. Yeah. So, what Garfield asked about is on the bunch of court questions. When do you use the 12, when do you use the 19, and when do you use the 31? Legitimate question. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. So, all right. remember, this is when the cord is stretched to its maximum. Okay? So, the cord can be modeled as a spring, where you have F here, elongation here, and it's a linear function. Right? So, as the cord stretched further and further and further and further and further, what happens to the amount of force? It goes up. It goes up. Okay? It's not a constant force. This is why this graph is not a horizontal line. If you were to draw this from the cord, it would be F, X, and a sloping line. So what determines the force is the fact that you're out here at 19 meters, which is going to correspond with some amount of force. Okay? So that's the only time that's going to play into it. 19? Yeah. Alright. This has to do with the spring, right? Yes, this has to do with the spring. Yeah. Okay. So you're using the bottom. So whether you fall for 20 meters, whether you fall right away and it starts to stretch, it doesn't make any difference. The only thing that determines the amount of force that's exerted is how far the spring stretches from its equilibrium point. Good with this? Yes. So okay. Yes. So the reason you're start, not starting from 12 is because it's just not starting to stretch yet. Yeah, because you want some free fall. You could make the bungee cord stretch as soon as you start it. Yeah. But it's not going to be as cool because then it's going to start to slow you down as soon as you start to fall off the bridge. Right. So and then you're going to hit the bridge. Yeah, well, maybe not the bridge. Okay? So, yeah, you could be in no free fall. It would go quick and that's all the farther you would stretch it. I'm surprised we haven't gone over a problem with, uh, have you ever seen that video of like, people on the canyons and they just have like, a rope and they I'm swing? I'm so close. Yeah, that's like Tarzan? I'm so upset. Okay. Well, you mean, like, so, like, you got this? Yeah, like a pillow. Yeah, that's okay. crazy. All right, we have this idea. Got this. Got it. Got it. Okay. The only thing the 12 determines is how fast you're going when you hit the end, when you hit the end of the bungee cord. Okay? The far, the, you know, the farther you fall, the faster you're going when you hit, when you start to slow down. So the only thing the 12 meters determines is how fast you're going when you get, when you start to slow down. Okay. And you'd find that. that. Yeah, it's just old school v squared, v squared equals v naught squared plus 2 a Yeah, Okay? Old school. Because there's nothing else acting as an upward force. Uh, okay. Because you're just in free fall for those first 12 uh, meters. All right, that makes sense. Okay? Good with that. Solid. Now, when you use the 31, visualize this. You're 31 meters below the bridge, and you want to be lifted back up. Well, how much energy is it going to take to lift you from here back up to there? How would you get that? You have to find your total. Wouldn't you just want to find the force of gravity? Well, you could, but there's, look, you want to go from here to here. How much is your potential energy going to change if you go from the bottom here MGH. back up to 31 meters? MGH. MGH, right? So this <coughs> 31 meters is when you're going to use UG, which is going to be MGH. Now, 
here's the deal. This energy here, when you're going from here all the way down, the path doesn't make the difference. Whether you're free falling all the way or whatever, it doesn't make any difference. You're going to have a certain value of energy created by gravity in a change in distance of 31 meters. Okay? How you get in between doesn't make any difference. Okay? So when you're down here at the bottom, the energy stored in this spring is what's going to equal that gravitational potential energy based upon the 31 meters. So this is going to be equal to your us, which is going to be one half kx squared. So this is what you're going to use to find the value of k. This is the only way that you can find k. But this h is going to be the 31 meters because that's the total energy in the system. The k is what you don't know, and then this is going to stretch 19 meters. Okay, so you use g h equals one half k squared when the, to get the value of k. Okay, which is going to be the opposite of us at the of uh, u g at the bottom. Yeah, if that's the amount of energy that's in the system. Yeah. Then when you get the k. Then down here, you've got an upward force created by the bungee cord. You have gravity pulling down, which is mg. So this, once you get that k, that's where you're going to use it here to find the upward force based upon that elongation. And the difference between those two is your net force. And force equals? Mass time, net force is mass times acceleration. Okay? Got it? Good? Okay. Now. Anything else? All right. So, let's talk something known as a ballistic tension. Is this going to be on the test as well? No, I'm just randomly working this problem. Well, that's good to know. Just expand our brain. What school should be for? Ugh, so good. Ugh. <laughs> it's it's, 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 it's like it's like you're a cat overdosing on catnip. Oh, well, cat what? Cat that would just be like food for us then. Yeah. That analogy. Cat that'd be cat. like. Oh, it's so good though. Like, don't it's everything cat. pretty. Put no <laughs> <laughs> if That doesn't make me happy. Then you you're not a happy person. I, I love catnip. <laughs> <laughs> He's so disappointed. <laughs> Honestly, his name is Garfield. That would make sense. Yeah. Oh, right it all comes back to you. It all makes sense. Well, guess my Google Graph is on the one right here. What's in my call? Oh my god, what's what going is on? that? Oh, I'm telling you. <laughs> you don't that. <laughs> 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 I honestly, I <laughs> Okay, so let me kind of lay out this ballistic tension problem because it ties together a whole bunch of different things. And I've got a crude demonstration of how this works. Will this be on the test? Oh my gosh. I yes. already asked that, and he said he wouldn't be teaching it if it wasn't on the test. What are you teaching us, like, stuff about Africa? <laughs> <laughs> That's on Tuesday. What's the weather like now? What's on Tuesday? Africa Day. Are you serious? Yes! Have you not heard of Africa Day? It's like infamous. He, he makes his special eggs. Right? Yes. Yeah. This is so cool. <laughs> I'm just now I'm just talking about the video you yeah. 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 But I'm twice as hyped now. There's so a whole day to Now you just do it. your day a whole lot worse. Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh, Sometimes I draw that elephant on your Africa poster. Africa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. I have to show you. Oh my god. He, oh my god. he saved it. Africa. It's on my note sheet. <laughs> so it's not a good elephant. <laughs> That's honestly pretty good. That's I did it first though, that. and you got my paper airplane. Yeah. Yeah. 
Can, can we see it? There you go, guys. I got Hold a whole it up bunch closer. of Then there's the solar system down here. There's a cat in the hat. You're playing the dog. Oh, I got to Oh, the cat in the hat right one there. is up on his nice. poster up there through that hat. Yeah. And what about the turkey? Where the turkey is? Oh, here, yeah. I just, just happy turkey day. <laughs> 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 okay. All right. Moving on. So, it's on there. Realistically, <laughs> I'm definitely yeah, watching that video. About it. I'm definitely watching that video. Right. Realistically, if you want to try and get the velocity of a bullet, you can't sit there with the stopwatch and go, fire Bubba, and then, you know, stop the stopwatch when it hits you in the arm. Okay? No. It won't work. So what we have to do is kind of work backwards. So what happens in a ballistic pendulum, is that you fire a high-speed bullet into like a steel pipe that has a dense clay in it. So the bullet comes in, it's, it embeds itself in the clay. Then it acts like a pendulum and swings up. So this is something that we can measure. We can measure how far the pendulum swings up. So this is four kilograms. The bullet has a mass of 18 grams. It's going to swing up to 12 centimeters. What we want to try and figure out is, from this information, how fast was the bullet moving. Okay, so let me kind of show you how this plays out. So, it's a crude setup. Sometimes it works. No, it's not a gun. Uh, oh, that was dang, I was actually... Wait. Wait. Oh, yeah. Oh, so... Oh, remember what you're... 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 Oh, and then here is the gun. So when I pull this back, am I doing work? Yes. I'm inserting a force through a distance. Now, could I, if I were to find the work that's done, let me do it. I'm pretty good at that. I know. Could I just take it as I pull it back? Farther and farther and farther, what's going to happen to the amount of force it's going to take? More and more and more. More and more and more, right? Because I'm compressing a spring. So if I could find the area underneath a force and elongation graph, or compression graph in this case, I could find how much potential energy that I've stored. Now, if I didn't lose any energy in the system, if no energy was lost whatsoever, when I throw this spring, then all of that energy would change into the kinetic energy of the ball when it gets shot out. And then all of that energy would change into the energy of this as it swings up. Because as it swings up, I'm changing kinetic energy into, into potential energy, right? So if, nothing, if no energy was lost, and this is a huge key, if absolutely no energy is lost, However much, money, however much energy I put in here is however much energy the ball has, which is however much energy this thing has up at the top. If absolutely no energy was lost, but unfortunately we always lose energy in the form of heat and collisions. So I'm going to fire this into it. Theoretically, it should hit stop, and this thing kind of swings up a little bit. Theoretically. Actually, it wasn't bad. So it... Hit, stayed in it. We'll try it again. I'll move this back a little bit. Is that just like Kleenex in there? Yeah. Because otherwise, I've got to have something in there to absorb that energy. Otherwise, it just bounces right back out. That's good. All right. That one stayed in. So imagine that we could like slow motion this and measure exactly how high this thing swings up at its highest point. Now, regardless. Up here, what's the only type of energy that it has? Potential. Potential. And that has to equal the kinetic. the kinetic energy that it had down here. Okay? I gotta leave this out of this for now. Can we do this right now? Can we just can I get a meter stick and kind of just like slow motion right? Just some check your math. Let, let me go through this. And then I'm just trying to check the math. Okay, there's not, we'll go through the math on this one because it's going to be the exact same sequence. The first thing you have to do is you have to work it from an energy standpoint. 
You work it from an energy standpoint, and then you work it from a momentum standpoint. So listen to me. You have to work the energy first. So when it's up here, it's going to swing up to a height of 12 centimeters. Now, does it make any difference at all whether I lift this thing straight up 12 centimeters or it swings up in a pendulum in terms of the change in energy? No. No, it's going to be the exact same. It does not make any difference whether I lift it straight up or it swings up like this. The change in energy is going to be the exact same. So, what? up here at the top of the screen, it only has what? Potential energy. Potential energy. This is just my UG, right? Which is just going to be MGH, right? Now, at the bottom, right as that hit, what's the only form of energy that I have? Kinetic. Kinetic. Because I had kinetic energy, which is going to be one half mv squared. So here's the question. What do I put in there from the mass? I've got three potential choices. I've got the mass of the bullet, I've got the mass of the slug, or I have the combined mass. Are both the combined mass? Yes. Obviously this one is because the bullet has, is in it. Okay, so I know this is the combined mass. But is that the combined mass? Yes. Why? If you do one, you got to do it on the other, they equal each other. So. No, I don't. Well, then that it's must right. be I think it's just that, the ball. Hold on. It's right as it hits it, so it can be good. Yeah, because if the bullet doesn't hit the block, how high does the block swing? Zero! It doesn't. If I, if I shoot the bullet and it misses the block, unfortunately it's Bubba on the lane. So, Bubba might jump, but... Could be a song. Bubba might jump with a bolt. Anyway. All right. So, <laughs> since, since these masses are the same, what can I do? You can just get rid of them. Get rid of them. Just toss them out there. So, I know G. I know H. The only thing I don't know is velocity. So, V is going to equal the square root of 2GH. So, I got 2 times g times 0.12 meters, so somebody do the math. 19.6 times 0.12, and square root of that. Oh, I'm on it. I have no doubt. <laughs> so why did we talk about the mass if we were going to cancel it? 1.53. I just wanted to make sure. I'm pretty know. sure. Okay. 1.53? Uh, approximately. Okay. Now, here's the question. <clears throat> Brooklyn, do you think that's the velocity of the bullet? No. No, I mean, I could outrun the bullet. If that, I mean, I could be faster than the speeding bullet. That's the velocity of the system. That's the velocity of the system. But from that, you can get everything you need. How? What do you mean? Science. 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 So you can find the kinetic energy. No, no, no. Uh, what do you mean? I could, but I don't want to. Um, we have the, the speed of the entire system. Can you have so to... The, so at this point, I know after the collision, this system is moving at 1.53 meters per second. Well, he gave us the mass, so we got to use that somewhere. <laughs> it has to... Why would you not find the energy of that? You'll see why I'm just saying. Uh, Let's do that. Because I, I lose a lot of energy in this place. Yeah, I could. Get, I I change the momentum. At the change. Right here. Oh, I said it first. Jeez. <laughs> Howie, what do you want to do? I want, I want to do the, the L or the P thing plus the other one P plus the other side. The, the momentum of the bullet plus the momentum of the yeah. pendulum equals the new momentum of the bullet plus the new momentum of the pendulum. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you're trying to say. Damn, pick that up. Oh! <laughs> hey, why don't you put your chair down oh. and chill out? Oh, hey, I'm just. Hey, oh. hey just, I'm just, I just got roasted two times. <laughs> he didn't even care. He just looked at me. He 
look like you. <laughs> okay. So here's the deal. What's the initial momentum of the pendulum? Zero. 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 So I got the mass of the bullet, the velocity of the bullet. Because they stick together, what can I do over here? I've got the B. Factor it out. And then I got the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the pendulum times V prime. Do I know my V prime? Yeah. Yes. So if I do this, basically I divide by, I want to find this, so I want to divide both sides by the mass of the bullet. So I've got 18 grams, 0 0.018 kilograms plus 4 kilograms times, what did you get, 1.53? Yeah. 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 Divided by? What is going on? Okay, so if I just find this top number, what do I find? The initial momentum. That's the momentum of the bullet, the top, right? So, it will be, yes, because they have to be the same. So once I find this, this is the momentum of the system, which had to equal the momentum of the bullet before. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so this whole thing right here just gets me the momentum of the system after the collision, which has to equal the momentum of the ball. So, what do you get out of this? I know, but what do you, know, but what do you get? Don't worry. 342. 342? Yeah. Now, does that seem like... A reasonable velocity. It does. Yeah. Is that the whole problem? That's it. Oh, that's not ours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you you have to work from energy standpoint first, and then a momentum standpoint. This is like. Okay. That's it. Was that pretty easy, Josh? So now, look at this. Oh, <laughs> you. If you go back. What is it? What is it? Okay, so here's the deal. The farther this thing swings up, what's, got, what's that going to do to the initial velocity of the system? It's going to increase. Yeah, because I have, the more and more energy I have here, the more and more potential energy I'm going to have here. Okay? Agreed. So, I can't change the mass of the bullet, I can't change the mass of this. So, if this thing is going to swing up further, it, the bullet has to go faster. Okay? That's right. Makes sense. Life's good. Now, let me pose this question. Oh, man. Pose it. I'll pose it. Pose it. on top of a hill. All four, all four of the exact same height, it's the exact same block in each situation. All of the ramps are frictionless. Okay? All of the ramps are frictionless. They're all at the exact same height. I drop A, B, C, and D. Which one of these with A, B, C, or D lands with the highest velocity? A, what? 
Mr. Dixon? You've been my student now for quite a while. You know I'm going to ask you one. I know, but I know A is right. You know A is right. Why do you know A is right? Oh, because. What do you, what do you say? Why is it? Do you remember when we did bowling ball? That didn't have the same. It's something about the force. Oh, you the no. I don't know what the objects are. Uh, What's velocity? Let's go to two G. Uh, they both have the kinetic or the same potential. They're all the same. They're all the same. They're all the same. They're all the same. Yeah, they all have the same. They all have the mass. The same mass. So they're all gonna have the same kinetic energy. So they all have to have the same. They all have the same potential energy. So they all have the same kinetic energy. So they all have the same velocity. Yeah, they're all the same. Up here, they they all start with the exact same up. Yes. Yeah. You're right. Now, let's just so let's just start with the big picture. Do they all have the same up? Yep. Yes. So when you get down to the bottom, guess what? All of that UG has to change into kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is one half in these squares. So be okay. So if you have the same UG, you have to have to end up with the same, which means you have to end up with the same velocity. Now, leave me out of it. That's just my me. It's still the same idea. But now let's look at A, B, and C. Will they all take the same time to hit the bottom? No. no. Yeah. No. Well. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Because B, Y, V, X. It's V, Y. What? <laughs> what? I don't know what equation that is. I'm no. just dropping. Oh, right. actually. Okay. It's yeah. a this lies this. Have any of you been snow skiing? Yeah. yeah. What is going on? I need help. What? I just need to the situation. Because I still haven't heard the situation. Dude, you're just dropping just it. They're all at the same time. Okay. Now, yeah, here's the mouse drops. Situation number one. You can drop straight off the bat. Oh. Okay. Situation number two, you can go down here. Let's just talk acceleration. Okay? In which case will you have a greater acceleration? Yeah, because your acceleration is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. Right? So here, when you go down the hill, you're going to have a smaller acceleration because you're going to have a smaller force acting on you. It's only going to be the force parallel. So when you look at these three, A, B, and C, which one's going to have the largest force parallel? Or the largest force in general? A is. C is going to have the least. So which one's going to have the smallest acceleration? C. C is. So C is going to have the smallest acceleration, but it, so it's going to take the longest time to reach the same velocity. Okay? So E, because, now this only works because these are frictionless. If there's friction, that's a whole other ballgame. Okay? These are frictionless. That's what you want to look at. Eric? They wouldn't hit at the same time. No, no, no. They would not hit. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. They're going to hit with the same velocity. So, you know, if Bubba goes, hey, goodbye, cruel world, and falls off the back of the mountain, Howie goes, oh, sucks to be you, and she skis down. I guarantee you, Bubba's going to hit the bottom a lot faster than Howie does over here. Okay? So, I'm not saying they're hitting at the same time. They're going to hit at the same velocity. Okay? Completely different ideas. Completely different ideas. Okay. Okay, so I traded so, the same thing is going to happen here with a pendulum. A pendulum swings up to a certain height. At the top of the height, it's the only form of energy that it has. Potential. Potential. So, when it swings here, or if it just drops straight down, you're both going to end up with the same velocity. Okay? This one's going to take a lot longer to get there but you're both going to end up with the same velocity. Good? Same velocity, different acceleration. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Jedi stuff. Mm -hmm. Jedi stuff. 
Okay. Uh, oh my god. What are they, what are they coming up? Yeah, how long does it usually take her to draw something? I don't know. I don't know. And how is she going to get it to America? Uh, well, there's two options. She's actually, her family still lives here in May, so she's actually coming back for Christmas. Uh, so oh, it'll she, be she done might print them over there and bring them, or she's going to send me an electronic copy, and I'm going to print them. Can you ask her to do like before we get out of this class? We're, we're working on it. How yeah. much money? I don't know. Wait, I don't know. How much I'm money? willing to pay you. Top dollar. If I wanted you to sign it, how much would I pay? One million dollars. <laughs> what are we talking about? Yeah. Okay. Jedi the concept you don't understand. Yeah, you don't understand because <laughs> it involves Jedi Star Wars. Right. And magic. Right. No magic, just Jedi Star Wars. Okay, back before you guys were born, one of my students drew this. Now oh. named Sarah Kissel. And so she drew this, and like it was Darth Vector. And I've kept it for all these years. And so what I started doing the Jedi Stofawa thing, I said I thought it would always be cool to have that drawn. So I contacted her, she's now, she got a degree in graphic design from K-State, and now she's in Japan working there. So I emailed her and I scanned her this picture and I said, hey, I still have this, will you redo it? And she said, she says, it's fantastic that I kept it. She goes, be honored. She goes, and now she looks at it, she goes, oh my God, that was just such crap that I did back then. <laughs> so anyway, so she said, what if we make it into like a movie poster? You know, because I initially, I was just going to have her do it in black and white, and I was just going to, like, paint it on the wall. And he says, no, let me do it as a movie poster with, like, a Star Wars theme. So that's the discussion. That, so she can do it as a movie poster, and, and then some of, I mentioned it, and some of the guys said, oh, I want to buy one. And so that was the discussion. She should, like, make your face in the Yoda. Well, that would be cool. Tell her to do that, too. What? You should just hire you her. The the master. You're the Jedi. You are. You're the Jedi stuff. What if she does that? Okay. She throws in a cool little plot twist. That's yeah. Mrs. Mrs. Shirts is like Princess Leia. <laughs> no. This is, this is if Mrs. Shirts is on the floor, I'm right. This is true. Okay. <laughs> if you say one more word, I'm getting mad. Shut up. That's your big doggies. Okay. What did you say? That's your big dog. Now, visualize this. I have two cars, a small car, a large car. I applied the exact same force <laughs> over the exact oh same oh, distance, weird. maybe one meter, two meters. I, don't care. Shivers, I applied the exact the same force <laughs> over the exact same distance. First off, what's the graph going to look like? Will it be a sloping line on a force distance graph, or will it be a, hor or will it be a sloping, or will it be a horizontal line? Horizontal. Why? Because you're applying the same force. I'm applying the same amount of force. I'm not stretching the cars. Okay, it's like I'm grabbing, stretching the car out. Okay, which would be cool. Don't get me wrong. Okay, so I'm applying the same force. What does the area on a force distance graph give you? Work. 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 Will the same amount of work be done to both cars? Are they going the same yes. distance? Force times distance. So yes. they're I'm applying the same force over the same distance. Correct. So they're yeah. same. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Is the same work going to be done? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, they both have the same velocity then. No. 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 Like what is Jules? Both cars, let's, let's, let's back up. Will both cars have the same acceleration tools? No. 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 This car is going to have. This car is going to have a small acceleration because it's going to have a. Because it's a bigger mass. mass. This one's going to have a. Large acceleration. Large acceleration. Large acceleration because it's a small mass. Right? So they're going to have that same. Okay. Good with this. Okay. Good with this. It's going to act over the same distance. So will the kinetic energy change be the same? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, because work. work equals change in kinetic, kinetic energy, right? Oh, yeah. So which one? So if we're both going to have the same kinetic energy, which one's going to be going faster? This one. 
the smaller one is. Because to get the same kinetic energy with a smaller mass, I have to have a, a larger bigger velocity. Velocity. A bigger velocity. Okay? Yeah, these are multiple choice questions that you get in me. Now, what if I apply the same force over the same amount of time? Oh, then that then I'm at the same momentum. The okay. Okay. Go so further. Turns. Yes. Oh God, I have a so pay attention to whether it's the same force over the same distance or if it's the same force over the same time. Two completely different right. ideas. So if it's a force time, you end up with the same momentum. If it's force distance, you end up with the same kinetic it's energy. Same momentum and work. equals okay. same velocity. And those car, two cars. So if it's the same force over the same time, the one with the smaller Wait, the smaller one will be further. Okay. All right, so. Okay. So, when you look at. You were like, you're not going to forget it. When you look at these problems, you're going to have some complex problems that are going to involve all three forms of energy. Ugh. Us in translational kinetic energies. I beg of you, set up a chart. Add them all up, figure out what your constant variable is going to be. Typically, you will start with all of one form of energy. Okay? So if you look at like what I did on uh, 8B. Same mass placed against the spring is released. Mass is allowed to move with frictionless ramp. What's the maximum height of the mass? Okay? <coughs> Set it up. Here's my UG, here's my X. On C, I did the same thing with kinetic energy and X. All of these, okay? Keep track of this so that you can keep everything added together so you can keep track of what is happening. Any height that I give you is going to be from measure from the ground up. That is what you will use in the calculation of up. How far it fell doesn't make any difference. It's only how high it is above the ground. So if I take this golf ball and I have it dropped, okay, and I say, hey, what's the potential energy a half meter above the ground and it fell from two meters? Don't use the one and a half. One and a half doesn't make any difference, okay? It's only how high it is above the ground at that point which is going to determine the up. How far it fell doesn't matter. So we just plug in how high it, we're talking about the GH? Yes, okay. that's it. How far it fell does not matter. Okay, say again, does not matter. It's only how high it is above the ground okay. at that point. So, anyway, uh, that's it. Test on Monday. Run your own.